Before we jump into today's show, I've got a really exciting announcement to make. The autumn cohorts for Start Your Podcast group program are now open. There are five dates between September and October, and it's a six-week program that will get you launched before Christmas. So if podcasting was on your to-do list this year, if you really want to get your podcast up and done by the end of 2023, then come and join me for one of those cohorts and let's make it happen. I have a free masterclass available for you called Understanding the Power of Podcasting. You can go over to donnaede.com forward slash masterclass, watch the masterclass, and get access to that enrolment. I hope to see you in one of the autumn cohorts very soon. That's donnaede.com forward slash masterclass. Let's get back to the show. This is the Wedding Procast UK. I'm your host, Donna Ede. And today on the show, we have Leslie Thomas. She is a money mastery business coach for service-based female entrepreneurs. Known for her holistic whole business approach to money makeovers, Leslie works with entrepreneurial women who undercharge and over-deliver to help them find their niche, create a new compass and crack their money code. And she is on the show today to help us with our money mindset. So listen in. Just before we dive in, I wanted to let you know that this episode was recorded last week. So as you're listening to this on the 1st of April, it was recorded last week. So when Leslie is talking about the changes to the roadmap, she is talking about what happened this Monday just gone. Also, there is a masterclass at the end of the month, three ways to increase your wedding bookings. And you can join that by heading over to the show notes and the link will be right there for you to join that masterclass. There are three days and three times for you to choose from. So hopefully you'll find something that suits you and I hope to see you in a masterclass soon. Let's jump into the episode. Welcome back to the podcast, everybody. I am so glad to have you here today because if you have had any sort of issues and thoughts and negative feelings around money in the last 12 months, then I have definitely got somebody on the podcast that can help you set that right today. We are welcoming onto the podcast the lovely Leslie Thomas, who is a money mindset coach. Welcome to the podcast, Leslie. Hi there, Donna. Thank you very much for having me. I'm looking forward to our chat. You're very, very welcome. So am I. I am a big numbers fan. So you would think like when they talk about kids at school, they always say the girls are good at English and the boys are good at maths and sciences. And I actually really loved maths. Not to say that I was good at it, but I love playing with numbers. And one of the things in my business that I do a lot of is playing with my figures what what could I do if this changed and how many people do I need for it and all of that kind of stuff I really enjoy playing with numbers so I like to think that my money mindset is quite good however I think there's always room for improvement so obviously you're more than aware of the impact that COVID-19 has had on the wedding industry over the last 12 months and it's something that is a relatively sensitive topic when we look at money because so many vendors have had to give back deposits things that we would usually have as you know non-refundable and due to the nature of covid the government and the powers that be have said that those things need refunding if people are going to cancel their weddings and as much as you have sort of looked at postponing and carrying over those deposits a lot of people have lost a lot of money and some people have even lost their businesses so it is a very sensitive topic so I just wanted to sort of address that in the first instance I don't know how you sort of feel about that but I just feel it's a hard thing to sort of get your mind round and sort of start looking back at the positives yeah no totally agree you know it's been a horrendous time for so many people and totally unprecedented and without any ability to plan you know we all know about recessions and downturns and things like that but to have thrown at us what has happened where whole industries have been closed down without any financial support without knowing where the end of the tunnel was then from a financial, a a psychological and a conscious perspective, 
it's been awful to witness and really really difficult for people to to lift themselves you know back up and find the ability to go on Mm. but find the ability is what we absolutely have to do because there is light at the end of the tunnel you know the government have started to reveal their lockdown plan i believe there was you know was more revealed again this morning in terms of what size of weddings we're going to be allowed going forward from monday with i believe the eventual plan as we were talking about earlier on being able to go back to what was the norm from august onwards And I suppose from a wedding industry perspective, you do plan for the future. You don't deal in the here and now. You do normally deal three, five, 12, 24 months out. So it's a case of, you know, rolling up sleeves and starting to work out what you can do to recoup where you're at. Mm. And a lot of the work that I do with clients is absolutely to get them to reflect on where they are but to put a plan in place of where they want to get to and how they're going to get there. But in order to know where they are, they need to understand where their money mindset has come from, because very often the the ability to be able to plan for the future means you've got to make a change in that mindset. And what I mean by that is if you are naturally somebody who finds it very very hard to be positive about money uh, to be positive about the ability to make money then that is going to prevent you from moving forward if you recognize how you are is how your parents were then very likely you are able to change that if you so choose to do and that is the really important part of understanding mindset is actually we do choose to have the mindset that we have we equally have the choice to change that mindset and once you understand why you are the way you are that you're holding on to something that's gone on in your childhood that is when you're able to say right this stops now I am going to own my money story I'm not going to own the money story that was something that belongs in my childhood. Mm, yeah, that's so good. And I feel like yeah, just what you were saying is, you know, something that I've been saying recently, which is wedding as wedding planners wedding photographers anybody in the wedding industry we're always working so far ahead and that's why we kind of got really blindsided by covid because it affected the now and our now is normally it's planned it's sorted it's ready to go smoothly because we've already planned it 12 months ago and so it really hit hard and now we're in a situation where it's hard to to focus on the future because we've been so stuck in the now so I think it's really important that we kind of address that um, as an industry to yet do what we do best which is work the now you know deal with the postponements that we've got deal with the issues around the government not being clear about the um, roadmap for us and and really messing up again for us in that respect but making sure that we're remembering that we need to be focusing on the future and how we would normally work which is working at those you know years two years in advance um so that's really important one of the other things that i wanted to talk about as we go into our mind money mindset is that i really want people to sort of protect themselves against using like this becoming part of their money mindset you know they've lost deposits they've had to give deposits back they've lost revenue over this year and and this could be something that i feel that could really start to seep into their mind as 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 part of their money mindset yeah, absolutely. So the first thing is, is to understand there's, there's, there are two main money mindset that we talk about, which is abundance and scarcity. If you have an abundant mindset, it doesn't mean you have loads of money. What it means is you have the security of knowledge that you have the ability to bring in money, to find a solution to create money as and when it is required. So you don't sit there concerned about spending money, you know, on the basics to enjoy your life, because you know, you have the ability to create money. 
Somebody with a scarcity mindset doesn't mean they don't have money. What it means is they're not very comfortable with spending money because they are concerned that they don't know how to replace that money when they spend it. We've all heard of stories, you know, in the press about the little old lady that lived in a rundown house with her cats. It appeared on the outside she had very, very little money because it looked like her lifestyle was suggesting she had very little money. She went on to die and it was discovered she had millions in the bank, the millions that she left to cat protection. She had a scarcity mindset. She had the mindset that the money was going to disappear, was going to be taken away from her. So she chose to not spend any money whatsoever and was very frugal in her approach to life. So when you understand where your mindset is at, that is when you can start to work on what you need to do to give yourself that abundant mindset. Because an abundant mindset is able to remove themselves from the overwhelm of sitting there worrying. Because when you're worrying, you're not putting yourself in a position to be able to take action and to be able to plan. Because when you're in overwhelm, you just sit there and you can't see past the end of your nose, essentially. And therefore, what you're worrying about potentially becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Whereas when you are able to sit there and work out, OK, I'm about to run out of money. What do I need to do? And pivoting over the last 12 months, you know, is a good example of that, where people have taken their business online or they've done something completely different. They weren't even aware they had that capacity in them to do that until they were put in that position and forced to do that. So I think the first thing is, is to understand where your mindset is at. And if you have a scarcity mindset, to work out what that scarcity is preventing you from doing. The next thing would be is, is to actually have a plan of where you are and where you want to get to. Because by being able to create that plan, that is when you can recognize what are the blocks that are in your way from preventing you getting there. Mm -hmm. And an exercise I take my clients through very often is meeting their future self. Because when you are able to put a lot of crystal clear detail around where you want, and I choose three years as the time frame, where they want to be in three years time. And the reason I use three years, it's long enough to feel there's enough time to take action, but it's short enough for you to be able to really see yourself in that position. Mm -hmm. So I ask them to imagine what they're going to be earning, where they're going to be living, what they're going to be doing on a daily basis, what they're going to be wearing, what they will have accomplished. And just as importantly, what are they going to stop doing? What are they going to stop doing that is going to prevent them meeting their future self? Now, a very, you know, a very kind of a very simple example of that. We all know it's really, really important now to be as visible as possible in your business. If you are not visible in your business, then you are invisible to your audience. If you're invisible to your audience, it means your competitors are visible to them. So you're almost gifting your business to your competitor. A negative money mindset equals lack of self-worth and lack of self-value. So when you are living in scarcity, as far as your mindset is concerned, Usually you are not valuing who you are, what you contribute, what your gifts and abilities are. You compare yourself unfavorably to others. You suffer from imposter syndrome and all of those things keep you small. If they're keeping you small, you are gifting your amount of smallness to somebody else in terms of them taking that and making themselves bigger. And visibility is a really rare or, or invisibility is a really clear example of people who have a lack of self-value, a lack of self-worth. I can't go live on Facebook. If I go on live, what am I going to say? 
What if I what if I say the wrong thing? What if I stutter? What if my hair doesn't look right? What if somebody, one of my competitors is listening and they're laughing at me? What if, what if, what if, what if? Putting all the negatives in place rather than the, yeah, but what if your ideal client hears you talking about the wonderful service that you offer? Or what if your ideal client really congratulates you for doing what they couldn't do? What if your ideal client, it absolutely resonates with them at exactly the time they're looking for a cake supplier, a photographer, et cetera, et cetera. So to focus on the positive rather than what won't happen. And what you really need to do, and again, this is why the future self thing works so well, is when you start to understand why you are getting in your own way, because that is what happens when we have a negative mindset. We absolutely get in our own way. We will blame others around us, but actually we're proactively saying to ourselves from a subconscious perspective, don't do that because of what might happen. Now, it is our subconscious's job to look after us, to keep us safe. And that is why when we go to do something out of our comfort zone that our that our subconscious will say whoa, whoa hang on a moment don't do that what could be the upshot if you do that you might look silly someone might laugh at you you're not as thin as the other person you're not as pretty you're not as clever you're not you're not you're not you're not rather than going whoa i don't care what what my subconscious is saying i know if i stop myself from being visible in my business I know the upshot is going to be, I'm not going to get any clients. What am I lacking at the moment? Clients. How am I going to get clients? By being visible. Mm -hmm. And once you start sending those messages to your subconscious, your subconscious goes, oh my goodness, I see you're going to go anyway. So I better come along with you because I need to look out for you. So by you Getting your subconscious on board and showing that you are determined to take that action, that is when your subconscious helps you. An example of this, and it's a silly example, but it works, is you're listening to the radio and you hear a song and you can't quite remember who the band is. And you go off and you go and do something else. You're making a cup of coffee, you know, you're know, you emptying the dishwasher, whatever it might be. All of a sudden, that the name of that band pings into your head. Mm -hmm. That is because you gave your subconscious that permission to carry on working on it in the background. You didn't say to your subconscious, there's absolutely no way you are going to remember who that band is. I don't know what you're thinking about it. It's a complete and utter waste of time because you're not going to remember. No, no, no. You gave your, your subconscious permission to carry on in the background and all of a sudden it pops up. And it's exactly like that with a new situation. It's exactly like that when you need to find the answer to what you're looking to do. Your subconscious will help you find it as long as you are encouraging your subconscious to know you're going to do it anyway. Yeah. And if it's a little bit like, you know, the Nike phrase, you know, just do it. And that is the whole thing with your subconscious Get comfortable with being uncomfortable because on the other side of discomfort is the magic. And it really is about getting out of your own way, basically. Yeah, for sure. I completely get that. And that was such a great example because I do that all the time. It's just like with anything, it's just like it's on the tip of my tongue. I know the answer to that oh it's gonna bother me and I go off and I do something else and then in the most random situation where I'm not even thinking about it suddenly I oh I remember so yeah <laughs> I love that kind of visual identity of the subconscious being put yeah. there so yeah that works really really well one of the things that I want to talk about is the kind of wording that we use around money because I think that has so much power especially talking about the subconscious one of the things that I heard growing up was donut money doesn't grow on trees that was a classic example and I think probably a lot of people have heard it and I probably see my dad as, as being in that sort of scarcity mindset um, because he's you know not rich um, but he's comfortable um, retired now but I feel like he 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 was a squirrel you know the, all, all of the little nuts that are being hidden in all these different places um, so that he's okay now but I feel like he did live with that sort of scarcity mindset and it's something that he passed on 
to us kids as we were growing up with that you know money doesn't grow on trees and the kind of life that we had you know we never went on holidays as children we in this country or otherwise we got a day out and that was kind of the most extent of our holidays so it kind of perpetuated this thing that there isn't enough there isn't enough what are some of the other things that you hear people sort of say around money that are kind of those common terms that we need to sort of look at and address it's yeah what what you said there's very true you know you you grew up with a dad who said you you know you wouldn't go on holiday you know there there isn't enough there isn't enough money so what we very often happen is we take the guilt actually of we shouldn't be spending money you spent how much you know though that 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 particular thing was how much and you're made to feel guilty Mm. because you want to go and treat yourself to something because you want to go and spend some of your hard-earned money on what somebody might call you know a frippery you might decide that you want to just invest in something in your business because you want to upgrade technology it works perfectly well but it's running a bit slow but you want to be able to upgrade it so it works more quickly and we very very quickly become guilty when we are spending money when it's not desperately needed to be spent and we need to let go of that guilt associated with spending but equally we need to recognize when we're using the ability to buy something as a plaster or as a medicine because we're feeling bad about ourselves I'm feeling bad about myself so I'm going to go out I'm going to buy a pair of shoes what happens you get that pair of shoes home you feel guilty you spend that money on that pair of shoes and you either send them back or you hide them in the wardrobe (laughs) rather than sell is that sounding familiar (laughs) Maybe a little bit. (laughs) Rather than celebrating the fact, you know, I had a great week in work, I got a new client and therefore I'm going to celebrate. And we can forever be caught in this wheel of feeling we have to justify what we're doing with regards to money. You know, there's one there's one thing I particularly hate about certain money mindsets is the need to discount your rates. And in particular, oh, mates rates. Mates rates really, really wind me up because the people that should be supporting us, the people sh- that should be our biggest cheerleaders are our friends and family. Why are we offering them mates rates? shouldn't do it. Everybody should value the service that we offer. We shouldn't be embarrassed to ask the fees that we are, we're asking for, for our services, because what we are offering somebody is a result, is a transformation, is an ex- a great experience. And we shouldn't feel embarrassed. And that is what we take very often from our parents from our childhood is that embarrassment to ask the value of what we're offering we feel we need to discount it we feel we almost need to do this when we're mentioning a price rather than being really open and saying for example you know I'm a brilliant photographer you are going to have such a great experience working with me because on the day I'm going to capture really fantastic reportage photographs but I'm going to be unobtrusive you're not going to be aware that I'm there I'm not going to be getting you to spend hours posing in the same position but because of that you know I am a little bit more expensive but by goodness am I worth it to stand in the power of your pricing and don't be embarrassed when you're embarrassed, people recognize a weakness and they wonder why that weakness is there. Are you lying about your ability? Are you lying about your experience? Do you really not think you're that good at what you do? Mm-hmm. So you really need to stand firm in the power of your ability and the pricing that you associate with it. Because when you undercharge, when you over discount, people will also put a price on that. And that is the difference, I think, between our generation and our parents' generation. They felt they had to shy away from standing in the value that they offered. They felt embarrassed about it. Whereas today, we understand that what you're charging is based on the experience that you're going to get. 
And we need to proudly stand up for that and not feel embarrassed. Yeah, I completely 100% agree. And I think that is something that, especially in the wedding industry, I came across it a lot when I was working full time in the industry is that pressure of needing to discount for friends and family and needing to to discount in general. Um, And I don't like the word discount. I never, never discounted my services I would give extra value so you know if you go up to my top package I will include xyz you know or if you pay in full you know I will give you a half price parent album on the back end you know things like that so you can work with offering extra whether that's extra time or you know um products at cost value and things like that that are going to get somebody hooked into your your price level that you want them at but don't discount because when you see the dfs adverts and things like that it really knocks the value of what you're doing and the year that we've just had i just feel like there's going to be this kind of this surge of people putting themselves forward for jobs as as new clients come along and they're going to be vying and there's going to be so much competition that it's going to feel like the only way I'm going to be able to get enough bookings is if I offer a discount and that is like the surefire way to have a race to the bottom and we don't want to do that to the industry so stand firm in your pricing guys and you know if you need to sweeten the pot add something extra, give more value, give more time, give more extra product, do something that is offering them more rather than getting them to give you less. Absolutely. Um, I think that's my key takeaway from that. Yeah, absolutely. So that is awesome. I'm so glad that you brought that up because it is something that I see as, as a big deal in the wedding industry, where it is that expectation that if you're friends, that you would do it for and for less and I always love it when people turn around and say oh well if if you do it for me for this price you'll get the exposure and that is something that in the photography space especially people would say that well you know I'll put your photos everywhere and, and you'll get more clients that way and um it's very hard, I think, sometimes to stand in that place and sort of fight your corner for it. But I, I do feel that one of the things in the industry that, that can be difficult to overcome is when you know that you're worth it, but you feel like you, you don't want to be explaining it to the nth degree to your clients, but you don't think they're going to understand it. And that's a lot of what I sort of fear that some people will struggle with because a lot of the time, and I've seen a lot of memes and things, adverts and whatnot that go on showing you that, yeah, it's it's not £300 for this photograph. It's £300 for the four years at college, for the this time that I spent doing this, for learning this technique, for the hours I've spent learning Photoshop, for this, for that, and showing yeah. the value of things. But we can't go to our clients with, that because it seems like we're one trying to justify our pricing but two like giving there's there's too much there so we kind of expect people to realize that our pricing is based on experience not necessarily the product that they're getting how could we sort of look to move past that in our minds and and by selling the experience they're going to get by working with you and that is the whole thing about when you're selling a service you know you don't go into the detail of you're going to get 250 photographs and I'm going to arrive at nine o'clock in the morning and I'm going to stay with you till the evening reception you don't go into that level of detail you go into what it's going to be like working with you what that experience is going to offer them what it's going to feel like to have you as a photographer and that sense of excitement the the sense of excitement that you're going to give them about that day about their day well that is how you know the supplier sells it to to the bride and groom basically Mm -hmm. it's all about the experience you're going to give them the feeling you're going to give them never go down you know yes a little bit later in the conversation you can go into the nuts and bolts but actually what they're looking for is a really really good photographer 
who isn't going to be intrusive on their day is going to be able to capture all those little intimate moments that haven't been posed for, is going to be able to capture the essence of the wedding. So when they look back at it, they can go, oh my goodness, can you, do you remember how you were feeling when you stood there? And that I think is, is what is the difference between being able to generate an excitement in somebody who is prepared to pay versus somebody who's just looking to get you know a few snaps done and they don't they don't see it as anything more than a couple of snaps at their wedding and and if you want to pitch yourself at that level then do so but if you want to pitch yourself as somebody who is offering an experience of working with you then that's what you need to sell you need to sell the experience not the package basically don't don't productize it turn it into the experience that you're going to offer yeah I think that's great and actually leads me nicely to let you guys know that the book that I'm currently reading is called sell with a story by Paul Smith book that I am loving and highly recommend but that is that's focusing on telling a story telling their story so a lot of what he's talking about is to sell through stories so you would say tell a story that's happened to sell your product but when you're talking about bride and grooms they don't want to know about somebody else's wedding they want to know about their wedding so if you can start with them telling you their story and then you can tell the story of how your service would unfold on their day that is going to connect at a much deeper level than saying, I offer this, 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 this. And then if you want add-ons, you can do add this, 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 and this. You will stand out so much more from telling a story because they will resonate with it. And the person that tells the best story that resonates with who they are as people who really listened to their story and know who they are that's the person they're going to book. And and that is exactly it, isn't it? Because a bride wants to feel that her wedding is almost the first wedding anybody's ever experienced. It's going to be the best wedding anyone's ever, or at least the most memorable wedding. So if you can get them excited that you are bought into that vision of making it the best wedding that anyone's ever been to, be it, you know, be it the cake, the dress, the marquee, the photographs, whatever it is you're selling, that is when you get your client emotionally engaged. Mm. And that is what you want. You want your client emotionally engaged because once they're emotionally engaged, the rest is pretty much the easy part. But yeah. unless you engage that emotion, they're not gonna they're not gonna choose to work with you because somebody else will try to evoke that emotion. Yeah. Yeah, I think that might be where I went wrong back when I was a wedding photographer. I I spent so long trying to trying to give them the information so that they didn't get ripped off by anyone. Like because I would start with I'm not I'm not everyone's photographer, you know, because there is a photographer out there for everyone. And I want you to be happy with who you choose. And I'd give them a list of all the red flags to look out for when they were interviewing other photographers, because I just wanted them to have a lovely day. So any, any photographers listening... There was a lesson there from Donna in how not to do it. (laughs) That was was a limiting belief in you, basically. You were trying to limit the ability of having that fall by almost saying, well, if they don't choose me, it's okay. They're not choosing me because I wasn't the photographer for them. Rather than realising it was your limiting belief that wasn't selling the experience to them, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, really, really is. Yeah, there. Case study right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Leslie, let's have a look. Can you tell me, have you got some books that we can look at? I'm a big bookworm. So has, oh. are there any books that you can sort of suggest that we might want to have a look at? Well, we've got this this couple of months where we're going to be a bit slower um, with the weddings anyway. Some books that we could read to sort of address our money mindset and sort of get us thinking about how we could change that. Yeah. Okay. So I didn't put this here for the podcast. It is always here because I'm always looking at it. So Carol Dweck mindset. That one is brilliant. I've read this one two or three times. Uh, Napoleon Hill, Think think and Grow Rich. Another brilliant one. One of my favorites I only read back in January was um, 
Rich Dad, Poor Dad, phenomenal book with regards to how having that abundant mindset versus that scarcity mindset, how a child can grow up differently. And the rich dad wasn't his dad at all. He was his best friend's dad, mm-hmm. but he can do uh, his mentor. And, and obviously the, the poor dad was his dad and the scarcity mindset. So they would be three really, really good ones. There's another one called The Four Money Mindsets. Can't remember the name of the author. It's on it's on Amazon. But it's called The Four Money Mindsets. And it just splits out scarcity and abundant into, into two other mindsets, basically. Mm-hmm. But that also is you know, another good one as well. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I will link all of those in the show notes, guys. So if you head over to www.s pwv.co.uk forward slash blog you will see at the top of the page will be the podcast with Leslie and you'll be able to find all of those links there so thank you so much for coming on the podcast Leslie it's been an absolute pleasure to talk a money mindset with you because it's one of my favorite topics and obviously one of yours um if anybody wants to get in touch um how can they get in touch with you how can they work with you and what kind of work do you do Okay, so I have a website and I've obviously I'll give you all the details to include. Um, but that is www.lesliethomas.com. There's an A in there. Um, I'll also give you um, details of a free money mindset masterclass workbook that um, that your listeners are absolutely, you know, with pleasure to download. And it's about a 27, 28 page, almost journal to work through to help you with some questions to understand where your money mindset is at. On LinkedIn, I'm Leslie Thomas. And on social media, I'm the Money Mastery Business Coach, because that's my official title, the Money Mastery Business Coach. But I'll give you all those details so that you can then share them with your listeners. Yeah, I will pop those in the show notes for you as well guys so please do head over and give leslie a follow on social media she spends a lot of time on clubhouse as well so you can go over and find her on there if you are a clubhouse aficionado um and yeah we will see you next week thank you so much for coming on the show leslie it's been an absolute pleasure thank you donna thanks for having me all right guys bye for now Don't forget to hit those stars and leave a review of the podcast where you listen if you found value in what you heard today. It's a free way you can help the podcast reach more people just like you.